Let's start with uh, dispelling a myth. In the Pacific Ocean, there is no island made out of plastic trash. The plastic uh, islands in the middle of the ocean are not actually real islands. You cannot walk on them, you cannot see them on the surface of the ocean. The reality is actually much worse. The plastic, when they're entering the ocean, crumble into small pieces and uh, become mainly of the size of a microplastic, nearly 5 mm in size or less. This plastic accumulates in the better called uh, uh, garbage patches and uh, creating the so-called uh, plastic soup. The main uh, garbage patches are five and uh, are located in the north and the south of the Pacific Ocean, north and the south of the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean, where circular currents accumulate them. When the plastic enter our ocean, they become a real threat to the wildlife. Fish and animals eat them thinking they are food, collecting them in their stomach. And this is causing them a whole series of problems and uh, even death. Other animals get trapped in, the, in this plastic, and these calls cause to them malformation, severe pain, and eventually, again, death. Plastic is a real threat to our ocean. Plastic is the cause of the issue. Or is it? Let me dispel another myth. As my professor of pollution control told me at my very first lesson, a pollutant is not a threat, per se, and a non-pollutant is actually not safe, per se. A substance, to become a pollutant, has to uh, be in the present, presence of three elements. A receptor that is affected of a, from a certain dose of a substance. A substance above a, a certain threshold, and then a pathway that link the two. Eliminate uh, one of these three elements, possibly not the receptor, <laughs> and you not will not have any more a problem. Therefore, plastic are not a pollutant per se. It is very true that we are producing a huge amount uh, of plastic uh, and uh, uh, even uh, not necessary. But the problem is that we are allowing uh, the plastic escaping the waste management system and entering into the rivers and then the ocean, creating the pathway that makes the plastic uh, a pollutant. Therefore, uh, we have to work in order to reduce uh, the production of unnecessary plastic and, of course, uh, avoid, to avoid uh, that uh, they uh, are uh, mismanaged. But unfortunately, this will take time. And uh, as the uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation warned us, we don't have time. By the 2050, there's going to be more plastic than, fi than fish in the ocean. Another, other studies tell us that between 10 to 20 rivers bring to the ocean between 67 percent to the 92 percent of the plastic that are entering to the ocean from the rivers. And this is a great opportunity for us. By intervening in very few rivers, we will, we will have a great chance to stop a huge amount of plastic. And this is the reason why we put our effort in building a solution for stopping the plastic by flowing down the rivers. And we call this solution the Blue Barriers. This solution is made by floating barriers that stop the plastic by flowing down the rivers and they accumulate in a collection basin. Of course, uh, we wanted uh, not to have a negative impact on the uh, river in uh, wildlife or even in navigation. Therefore, we divided the two, the two barriers 
in order to leave a space in between and allow fish and animals to pass with no problem and also uh, navigation. The barriers uh, has been made in order to uh, divert uh, the waste in creating a transversal current that brings the plastic from the first barrier to the second one and then into a collection basin when it, where it is captured, collected and transported uh, to recycling. Of course, uh, we have to consider that uh, uh, the current can be very strong and uh, flooding uh, can happen and actually, this is the uh, situation where the most of the plastic are transported. Therefore, we structure the barrier in order to resist it to any condition of the river. There is an internal structure that is very resistant, made by uh, stainless uh, uh, cables that is very uh, able to resist to any condition. On top of these, uh, we wanted to make the solution as simple as possible because we know that in the majority of the rivers that are most polluted are in developing countries, so very often uh, the resources the, uh, of the local administration are little. So being simple means like uh, being available to these local administrations. We tested uh, our barriers in uh, quite a few situations with the small-scale prototype and the real scale prototype, and uh, we have been successful. We see, we saw that like we can collect all the plastic that are floating in the river that we tested, accumulate them in a collection basin, and again bringing them to recycling. In most of the situation, we're going to collect a huge amount of uh, plastic and material. With the collaboration uh, that we are building uh, with the other organizations that are in the waste management sector, we are going to make the most uh, with the material we are going to collect. Mainly we are going to collect uh, organic material, wood and vegetation, and plastic. Plastic can be selected and brought to recycling, and then there is going to be a part of, the, of plastic that usually is considered not valuable. However, we want to make uh, uh, recy recyclable also this part, and we are exploring this way to make it possible. And uh, the possibility is converting these plastics, such as plastic bags, wrappings, or other films, in construction material, bricks, poles, or other panels, or other construction material, and is actually, is actually possible. From these, we will have uh, the advantage of also creating uh, uh, job opportunities in the local uh, uh, waste management system. And this will uh, uh, create uh, value for the uh, local uh, communities. Unfortunately, our barriers will not solve uh, everything. We have to act at different levels. We have to reduce the plastic that we are producing, we have to improve the waste management system, but more important, we have to change society uh, behavior and habits. But unfortunately, for doing this, it will take time. And we don't have actually time. Therefore, we have to drive the change. Everyone, every one of us has the responsibility to do that. And uh, as customer, we can uh, use our power to lead uh, the company change using a very powerful leverage, which is the customer choice. The change uh, of our behavior is very, absolutely very important. At the moment, our habits and behavior are not sustainable. Humanity won't last long if we continue in this way. Therefore, we have absolutely to modify our behaviors and uh, improve waste, waste management. But because this will take time, uh, stopping plastic waste in the river 
before they reach the ocean will, will be a solution that will bring a, a result very relevant in the short term. Thank you.